let's shift focus now and talk about national issues. Well, not party issues now. I'm talking about the issues of the economy and how the President Muhammad Buhari, in his second term, is handling things. Well, there are no so much good news, I tell you. Well, uh, good news that uh, the, the party in power has promised uh, the next level. They said they're going to take Nigeria to a better uh, grounds. But things are not looking. The bad news is that things are not looking very good. Um, historically, since April 2018, Nigerian inflation have gone for the worst for the fourth first time. Inflation for the fifth time has risen from 11.98 last year, late last year, to 12.13%. Now, Hold that on one hand and look at this figure also. The excess crude account from the nations, uh, uh, what, what comes out of the proceeds, the, the surplus from the proceeds of oil sales goes to excess crude account. But in one month, it went from $325 million to $70 million. Where are these monies going to? How the, is the economy being handled well? How are we in trouble again, considering the amount that was there, over $24 billion, uh, some uh, four years ago or so, and now it's gone to $70 million. Let's make sense of it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being joined on the program now by Mr. Shion Onigbinde. Uh, he's the lead at um, Budget. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. It's all a pleasure. Thanks for calling me. Is it all smiles for Nigeria economy? With what we're seeing, the rate of the inflation, and the manner in which uh, we've, uh, I wouldn't say plundered, but we spent the excess crude account. I mean, it's not all good news. So, um, and this is January. Don't forget that the... Uh, the VAT, the 7.5% increase in VAT is going to kick in in February. So we might have not even seen inflation in its, uh, in its final state. Um, and I think the CBN has made a position that we want to bring it to a single-digit number, like 9% or 8%, and it's looked impossible. When was the last time we had it a single digit? I mean, it was like about six years ago. Um, so we have to now move to a position to say, what's the problem here? And I think the CBN is trying to abandon managing inflation. They're going for liquidity of banks and attacking that banks have to reduce interest rate savings. I mean... And they also have to even do more to increase the number of capital that we with the city. But which is a good thing on one hand. It's weird. yeah, it's weird. it's a good thing. But you also have to. I mean, everyone gets worried about the the, the the level of regulation of CBN recently. I mean, if you want to nationalize the bank, let's nationalize the banks. I get worried about CBN going to say this is must be the interest rate of a bank to say savings interest rate of a bank one percent. But, but don't you think that some of the banks are charging way too much in terms of interest rate? A lot of people complain about that. I mean, the savings one. The savings. Can, yeah, so the yeah. money you put in at the bank, it's going to be put at 1%. The goal is to push the money back into the economy and so that we can do much more more investment. But investment is not going to come into the economy if the macroeconomic fundamentals are not strong. Something that we also have to put in, in, in mind as we do these things. But the other part of it is also the excess crude account, which was a big story this weekend. We had the announcement that the money is now $70 million. And in budget, we were asking... How did it become $70 million? When President Muhammad Buhari got there, it was $2.07 billion. Now, gradually, we took money for ammunition, we took money, and even some part of the money were not even accounted for, I mean, properly to say this is when the money was used for. But they have responded last night and they said the money was used, to, was given into the National Sovereign Investment Authority, NSI. All right, Ms. Onegbinde. Let, let's take a breather mm. because I'm trying to get a sense of what this all means altogether. The mm. excess crude account is for the raining day. When we have trouble, we might be able to spend those money, but we have spent them now. We have just about 17 million US dollars and things are not really looking good. I understand also that the GDP figure, new GDP figure, might come on Monday or Tuesday. Mm. We'll make a sense of what that, that means altogether. Mm. Take a cup of coffee if you're feeling a bit cold. Uh, if you're feeling hot, take a cup of water. And we'll come back and crunch some of these figures and what it means under the Buhari government. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. So President Mohamed Buhari promised, uh, anchoring on all of his, of his promise, he was tagged next level. What does the next level mean? One of the points is the issue of the economy. How is going to rejig the economy? But some of the things that we are hearing and seeing in terms of the economy, we understand that very fantastic conversation went down when uh, the Economic uh, Advisory Council visited and uh, spoke and did a presentation to the president. But 
in terms of tangible reaction to that meeting or presentation, we have yet not seen. Maybe we'll see them in the coming days. And that's why Mr. Shen Wonigbinde, the lead at uh, lead partner at Budget, is talking to us tonight. Three things that we are, we are, we are anchoring this conversation on, on the issue of uh, the inflation rate, mm. which has gone the fifth time in consecutively, mm. is gone, is rising. Mm. And also, and it's got into 12.13. Yes, and we're targeting one uh, a single digit. The excess crude account plunged from 325 million in one month down to 70 million US dollar. And to cap it up, the bad news again is the fact that our debt, our debt, debt burden is rising by the day. Are we in trouble, Mr. Ningbide? We are, if we're not careful. I mean, we, it doesn't look like an emergency situation um, just because oil prices are still in the favorite space. I mean, we are around 57 to $70 um, dollars per barrel. Um, but if you're going to pay attention into what is happening, uh, it might go much more worse than that. For example, if you look at the accretion to the, uh, to the, uh, the excess crude account, you see that we were, we're doing it was, and it, just, it depends on the price of, of crude. So 16 billion in 2011, and you can see how it was going down to 13 into 6.5 into 5 into 1 and 7 uh, million. Now, the challenge is that oil prices are not rising again, so you can't get enough accretions to the excess crude account as you do before. Now, what's going to be more problematic is that we have to even question the rationale for excess crude account going forward. $70 million held in the account. Why don't we just close down the account and put and make sure that we create a savings framework that is constitutionally backed? So, you know, you have a, you have a constitution, and the constitution says share all the money. Section 1, all the money paid into the treasury should be distributed. The constitution does not give a framework for savings. Even the constitution would say the economy is in the hands of the federal government, but it does not give a framework for savings. We are on the verge of another constitutional review. And this is the time that President Muhammadu Bari can put his political capital on the floor and says, we need to sit down as people and define how do we save as a nation. Because even the act that governs the NSI is subject to the constitution. That's where, where some of the monies have gone to. Yep. So, but if you listen, because part of that money is mm. of the SS crude account, mm. part of the 24 billion and the withdrawals from it, mm. is said to have been given to state governments mm. and local government mm -hmm. when some of them were bailed out mm -hmm. at some point. Mm. Would you say that the money is being spent or the spendings have been reasonable? It's not been reasonable. And I'm going to be clear. So what did the money? We say we are saving. When you're putting up investment, you want to put them in a space where they can generate back, when we can put them self-generating investments. So you are saving, but you're using your savings for consumption. And now it doesn't make sense at that point. And I think if you're putting the money in the NSI, and NSI is investing in PPPs, investing in assets that would be told or would be, would be paid back in some sort of way, that makes more sense. But if you're giving money to states for salaries, you know, because the reason why we give money to state at that point was for salaries. We've never bailed out state on capital infrastructure gap. We've only bailed out state to pay salaries. Interesting, great, but the question is, the infrastructure level at this state are also extremely weak. So we must ask ourselves, what do we want to save for? What's going to be, the, what, what, what would the savings be used for? The countries that we look up to, like places like maybe Qatar or maybe Norway, the savings are geared towards this like entire generational fund. So it's not a fund that is supposed to be consumed by a single generation. It's something that is a, they're putting infrastructure that a decade, in two decades, and three decades, those infrastructures are is, still is, standing. Isn't that how some countries and some economies have planned for decades and they, they, they have uh, these, these plans for, for, for decades? But uh, my fear right now, because you deal in figures and you, you make sense of mm. some of these things, uh, do you think the economy is badly run by this government? I, I, would, I would say it could be far, far better. Uh, because I, I think... Well, think you, you, want, you want to be political now, because... I, no, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not political. Do you think? I, 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 don't think it's an, I don't think it's an all or nothing thing. I don't think it's to say... But I would say it's below past mark, far below past mark. And this is why you have to first ask, what's the philosophy of... What's the economic philosophy of this government? You know, and I've always made that point that you don't run... Uh, what, what we're doing now is just to say we're doing um, import substitution, we're closing borders, I mean... Would close its borders in this age and this century. But they will give example of some economies that have done that and have worked for them. But they did not. So in, in the last. And they said that yes, it has actually worked in terms of local production and consumption. Now, also. I'm going to ask you that those countries, 
the point of when it when they stopped being import substitution and they become export facing, it was a point where they found scale. The China between 79, because everybody always looks at China. China between 79 and 1990 is not the China you got between 1990 and 2020. You were aware. I mean, we're even Nigeria is aware. When you hear made in China 20 years ago, 15 years ago, how does it feel? Everybody feels it's a substandard. Yeah. China, the Mac, or the laptops you used to, they are produced by China. Apple is even complaining because production of Apple's products are largely in China. And because of coronavirus, they're complaining. So because if you scale exports growth, if that's your primary principle, we are going to be export facing. There will be bumps at the beginning. So you don't see sense in the border closure? I don't, see, I, I, I don't believe in closure. it. I don't believe in it. I don't think, I think if we have, if we have institutions that are failing, we should address them. If the customs is not doing its job, we should address them. If we have porous border crosses and we need to secure those places, we should address them. But in this age and time, to carry that point as your philosophy, it's not right. We should focus on becoming the country that sells to the world. Apart from what? That is Nigeria's existential question. We're talking about the country is growing at 2% growth. Let oil prices half by tomorrow morning. We'll be in the recession in under six months. Is that the country we want to be running? Every time we are, we are growing or we are moving, around the swings of oil prices. There are two questions I'd like to ask you before mm. we close the program. One has to do with what we might see uh, uh, tomorrow or next about mm. the new GDP, uh, GDP figures. Mm. If it goes well, that means probably over the last few months we have done well. Mm. Uh, if it does look bad, that means we're in trouble. Uh, mm. uh, what do you see? Because IMF is not uh, predicting anything better for our economy. But as it stands right now, what are your biggest fears? I, I don't think it might be rosy. It might not be, it might not it might be at the same band that we have been doing, so 3%, because investments have not climbed up recently. So look at, we had this, our investment fell by 200%. In fact, we're going much more, even weaker in the foreign direct investment. We've had big announcements. People say they are coming, but you have to see the numbers in there. So, I mean, if you look at it on a, on a wide scale of the economy, and there's the, the part, a, a chunk of our economy that's still in recession, which is the trade sector. I mean, I, we don't know how the December spending might affect that. But we have a trade sector, which is the buying and selling, which is the merchandise and the wholesale and retail. That part of the economy is still struggling. It right. shows you that at the, photo, at the foot of the economy, there's a lot of crisis in there. Let's, let's close the program on the issue of debt crisis. Mm -hmm. Just about 60 seconds uh, for us to, to close the program. Uh, that's another fear that a lot of people are saying. But a lot of, some development uh, experts will tell you, it's good sometimes to borrow if you can be able to live up to it and uh, match up your lifestyle towards paying back. But as it stands right now, do you think that we might be in trouble with our borrowing, a debt crisis? I think there's a problem with communication. If you're going to borrow, because you're borrowing for the generation to pay back, future taxes are going to be used to pay back this debt. So we have to be extremely clear about what we're doing with it. I mean, I've not seen an official document to say this is what we are borrowing right now. And this is the, uh, the guiding philosophy. This is the guiding idea around our borrowing. This is how we're going to pay back this debt. This is the projects that we are doing on social, on economic front. These are the reasons why we're doing this. But a lot of this just say there's an opportunity to borrow because there's cheap finance in China and we want to go for it. There's cheap finance in China and, we, and in, 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 in the World Bank, we want to go for it. We need to be clear. What are the pain points of Nigeria? Power, a huge pain point. Let's go forward and borrow that. Education. Let's go and do more about that. But for us to be borrowing to revitalize a TV station, where are the things we should ask? The BBC, for example, that we could look at as a tax, a minor tax that is paid by every single citizen that sustains the institution. If I go back to things I think like that, but to go on and say, we want to borrow on things that we are not clear about the economic fundamentals, we are going right. to go back to the pre-2005 where we were in deep crisis and we had to struggle our way out of it. And there might not be debt cancellation this time. Assume that President Buhari is watching right mm. now. In 20 seconds, let's close the program. What would be that golden word you want to drop on the program tonight? Should President Muhammad Buhari, who has the economy right in his hands, and uh, perhaps how he can rescue it in 20 seconds, what would that be the golden advice to him? I think face exports. Find a way to grow your exports. Two, find a way to reskill the economy. And three, find a way to properly calibrate this economy. That means invest in data. Invest in the MBS. Who is a Nigerian? We need to sort out our identity management system and sort out an holistic way. Mm.
Mr. Shemonik, the, uh, the man who loves figures and makes sense of it uh, is the lead partner at Budget, making sense of some of these issues. Uh, just pray that uh, prayers cannot solve all the problems <laughs> at the time, but we need all to, to work hard. Uh, thank you so much for coming on so tonight. So pleasure. But that's our show for tonight. Much of it that you can catch if you have not seen every part of it on our YouTube uh, platform tonight. And you can also watch us uh, on other platforms and catch some of our other programs on our website, chadnastv.com. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.